What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Vile Files. I'm your host, Nick, joined by Allie and Amanda. Hope you're all having a great day today. What's going on? We were so ready for you to be like, ladies, so how are you doing? In. And we both like, we both grabbed our mics and then he we kept lunged going. We for like, the mic uh, and we're like, okay. Something new. I yeah. had a hey yo coming out of my mouth. That was, oh. I had to bring <laughs> that back. <laughs> Hey, did you hey all, yo. <laughs> I know we 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 didn't get into this last episode on the uh, Victorian Greg episode. If, if you haven't listened to, obviously go back. And bombshell. List bombshell. But uh, how are your how was your Thanksgiving? Amanda, mine was good. I went to I joined Nick and his he has some family who live in Malibu. So I they're really lovely. I've met most of them before, like the aunt and uncle and cousins, and I got to meet his grandma for the first time, and she was like. Oh, she was great. I I love a grandma. Who doesn't, honestly? But she was like really. Could do without him. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing oh could God. get you canceled faster faster than being anti grandma. Like that is like the worst. But she would just say stuff like she was like, "Well, we could make ham and bean soup with the leftover." <laughs> like she was just God like, bless her. A Grandmas real, love like, a lo leftover. Oh my God, they do. They love so, a leftover. It was a lovely low key Thanksgiving. How was yours? I went to Denver. Um, my sister had to work. And so my family said, never fear, we'll come to you. And we always do our holidays with our like best, best family friends that we grew up with. So they're basically family. And they said, what? We're going to Denver. <laughs> we purchased a VRBO right next to your VRBO. So we all just showed up. And my sister, it like meant a lot to my sister, which was cute. Yeah, she was on call until like 5 or 6 p.m. I think it was on Thanksgiving. <laughs> we all chanted as soon as she got the notification that she was off the clock. We all chanted, shot, 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 and made her take a shot, which was really funny if you know my sister because that's not her at all. But <clears throat> fun was had. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Nick, how was your Thanksgiving? It was fun, lovely. We went to, I, well, I already, we already mentioned we were in Alabama, and then we went to Savannah, Georgia, uh, where Natalie's dad's side of the family it's a it's a big thanksgiving is a big big deal so that was nice i observed a couple situations that i i i well one was this like like i i saw i saw a karen mom situation before my eyes oh yes tell me about it. a close encounter yeah In we were world. so nally and i have recently tsa pre-check I knew you were, I was like, he's either going to say we're flying first class or. <laughs> no, we were too safe. And which, by the way, like, you know what? I'm not even going to say because I don't want, it's, it's, I think if people are figuring out, it's relative, it's like not that hard to get, I don't think. It's, I, no. I've been, I'm being ghosted by a TSA pre check. Really? I submitted an application months ago. Really? Yeah. Anyway, we recently, a couple months ago, TSA pre check, it's a, it's a delight. It really makes the traveling Too experience clear as well. No, don't have okay. clear yet. Yeah. The combo is, is that global entry? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's, different. I don't know. Anyways, so we just only have TSA project. I'm also reading this book called Sapiens. Really interesting. Uh, but and one thing I only brought that up because there's this part in the book, anyways, where they talk about how luxuries ease, quickly become necessities mm. in our lives, and we often don't appreciate them. And then those lux, you know. Anyway, so TSA project luxury. Right, nice to have. And things about TSA PreCheck is you don't have to take your shoes off, you don't have to take your laptop out, and it's just a metal detector. It's not one of those things where you have to get scanned, right? But every once in a while, like I don't know, they have different rules at different places. And in this TSA PreCheck, they were the lady. It was this lady and her like teenage son, and their teenage son would seem like the sweetest boy. Is like his voice was like, "Hey, my, it was just a sweet boy. It was just a sweet boy." And I noticed. Because like they asked this woman to take her shoes off, which I understand. Like, hey, you got TSA pre-check. You're just like, I don't have to do this. And for whatever reason, they asked this lady to take her shoes off. Like, I think Nally got like flagged and it was like, oh, we randomly, you have to do the, she got, she had to get scanned because like mm -hmm. every once in a while. And this lady just started like taking out her frustrations out on her son, just started yelling at him right in front of us. <sighs> and he was like, no, and, like, she's like, why are you being such a jerk? Ser like, <laughs> I was like, oh. oh, I, 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 I hated this woman. Like, hated her, and I know nothing about them. But like, and I, and I thought to myself, who knows? Maybe, maybe this kid is this little fucker. I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe this mom's at her wit's end with her kid. But the kid was literally like pleading with her mom, 
like, please don't yell at me. Like, I was just trying to help. Because in literally what was happening, and he was like, he was being the adult. He was like, no, it's okay, mom. Just take off your shoes and it'll be fine. And she was getting all frustrated. And then she got defensive as if he was calling her out you know mm -hmm. when her kid was like just like whispering to her mom and she was like yelling at him like just stop it you're just being a jerk he's like i'm not i'm sorry and it's like and there's like a couple more instances where she just kept yelling at him and she was he was just while his mom was yelling at him he's trying to calm her mom down while simultaneously apologizing to him and i i just loathe this woman and so as i went through the metal detector and i put on my shoes i just walked up to him i pat him on the shoulder and i said I think you're pretty great. And I looked right at his mom and just walked away. I like, I wanted to do more, you yeah. know, but like, I just like, <laughs> it's not really my place, but like, I just like, stop fucking taking it. You know, she, she, it made me feel like maybe she just had a bad beat with her, her father, you know, maybe, I don't know. Family for her Thanksgiving. Family. So maybe, maybe her son's father. I don't know. But it was like, she, she seemed like she was taking out her frustrations out on her son about like, you know, like yeah, it, it just like don't do that to your fucking kids. Like, yeah, like be fucking nice. Regulate. You know, like you're. I'm sorry if your husband or your partner or who other people in your life are shitty to you. Don't fucking take it out on other people, let alone your fucking kids. Anyway, you're impressionable young kid. That's very sweet. And this, Nick. this guy was like, this boy was so fucking sweet. I don't know. How and did it, he respond? He went on to become Bill I know, Gates. I think I just, I think he just kind of shocked him, and I, I actually just kind of walked away because I wasn't trying to start something, something and I yeah. wasn't trying to put her like, but I just couldn't help myself. I just pat him on the shoulder and I said, "I just think you're pretty great," because he just wouldn't stop fucking yelling at him. I don't know. Anyways, that's really. I think that's so sweet. Uh, like, I think that's such a was, good response because it's like not trying to like. Because obviously, if you start a fight, then like he suffers more. Because and I don't want to like mom... yell. At, like, I don't want to yell at her about don't talk to your son that way. I just wanted to like. I just felt like I needed to like make him feel good. Yeah. <laughs> about himself. Manscape, hey, clean those balls this holiday season, right? Tis the season to clean the balls. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> It's a perfect stocking stuffer. Your chances are if your the men in your life are walking around with a just a massive hairy bush. Trim uh, that bush. Tr <laughs> trim the tree. I don't know. <laughs> you know? There's just no reason for it. All the things that Manscaped has to offer is great in the under area. They can go to town. The Platinum Package 4.0 is the perfect gift for the man in your life. Manscaped offers a handful of their liquid formulations, shampoos, body washes, upstairs and downstairs, deodorants, gels, exfoliants. And they have amazing underwear too. Amanda's wearing their deodorant. Uh, constantly. Constantly. But if nothing else, their ball trimmer. It's, I don't know, it's great. It's, Trim those chestnuts. It's wonderful. What a party trick. It really, <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be, yeah. Start your holidays on the right foot. <laughs> Parties in your household show. getting stale. <laughs> oh, does your dad have uh, have have long nose hairs coming out of his mouth? Or well, ear hairs. The weed whacker nose and ear trimmer will solve that problem. The Shear 2.0 is the full kit for the nail care with scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file for the traveling man. So anything grooming in the for the men in your life, think of Manscaped because they're crushing it in that department. Save 20% off. Plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's right, 20% off. Plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be holiday's biggest hit. When it comes to choosing a wireless plan, you're forced to compromise. But what if you didn't have to? What if you could get reliable service without a contract and save money? Introducing Total by Verizon, a new no contract, no credit check carrier for you and your family with plans starting at just $30 per month on America's most reliable 5G network. Sacrifice nothing, experience everything. Total by Verizon is available at totalbyverizon.com and at retailers nationwide. Based on first place rankings and root metrics first half 2022 5G assessments of 125 metros. Experiences vary, not an endorsement. Then another story. Natalie has a friend when we we're she was back home got to see a lot of friends and she used to bartend way back in the day and so we run into some bars she knew some people working there and then her friend just had a baby not too long ago and 
you know, her friend, sweet person, but it's the type of friend who just, I don't know if she just makes good decisions for herself, but she's, she's, she doesn't stand up for herself a lot. I don't know, but like sweet, sweet gal. And I know I've met her friend, but she just had a baby. And like, I'm meeting a lot of people who are coming up. It's like, oh, hey, this is my boyfriend, Nick, whatever. And, something. and then this guy comes up and Natalie's talking to him. And, and Natalie was telling me like, oh, this is so-and-so like, you know, this is the father. And I'm like, oh, like really nice to meet you. It seemed like they were having a nice conversation. And I was like, oh, all right, great. And, and I wasn't really paying attention to their conversation. I was like, some game was on, I was watching that. So after he left, Natalie told me how the mom, she's homesick with the baby. And like a baby's like th three, like less than six months old. Oh, and like the, infant. Infant. And she's sick and he's out at the bars with his buddies. It's like 10 o'clock. And I was like, what? Really? And she's like, yeah. And there wasn't, it wasn't like some event, some party. Like there, it wasn't, nothing's going on. He's just like standing there and like just chilling with his buddies. And I guess like Natalie made a comment like, you should, you should probably go home. And then she was texting her friend and she found out, she's like, yeah, like I begged him not to go, but he went out anyways and blah, blah, blah. Then Natalie got really pissed off. And so then we decided to leave. And I, she's like, well, what should I say to him? And I go, just walk up to him and say, be a better father go home and so she walked up to him and he was around all his buddies and she like very kind of lion mama lion energy Yeah, don't fuck with natalie <laughs> yeah put her hand put his hand on his shoulder and said be a better father go home and you could tell he got like all just embarrassed and like th thanks and like you could tell like he got called out and whatever but i was just like if you were if you're dating someone i mean forget about having a kid but wouldn't you say, like, if you're dating someone and you're sick, if they don't at least offer to, like, stay home and help take care of you? Like, I get, like, if you don't want to get sick or whatever, but, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, It's 10 times worse when there's a baby involved, though, because it's one thing to be sick yourself. It's always emotional and hard. But then to have to take care of an infant on top of that? Yeah. We can't even take the baby out of the equation but, because it makes it that much worse. But don't you think you should at least, like, offer if your partner's sick to like what can you do for them you better have a really something that is incredibly important like if you have some event that is unmissable if you have some commitment some work thing like it better be something that is so essential in my book if you're not going to stay home and take care of them because i think that's one of the most like amazing times to show up for your partner is when yeah. they're not feeling well and you like play nurse and just like do whatever you can to like keep them company like one i devil's think advocate though you said it was 10 p.m do we know if they were just both like already asleep? No, she was up. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. I take back my comment. Yeah. And uh. she'd said, don't go out in the first place, right? She had begged him. She'd begged him not to go out. She begged him not to go out. Yeah. And That's it made awful. me wonder, and I was, and the reason I brought this up, because I'm curious how many people out there deal with stuff like this. Yeah. Or have friends who deal with stuff like this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what there is to do, but I guess for the people who, aren't yet married or don't have a kid with someone if you're looking for red flags like how be mindful of how caring they are when you're busy or not feeling well or or need some help do they make you a priority when you like aren't at your best self or do they make you feel like a burden uh, yeah mm -hmm. and are they willing to set aside their own individual like you know desires and make you feel like a priority and make some sacrifices for you again like there's there's a balance to everything we're not saying like you know if you have a big event going on or whatever but like do you feel like when you're down whether it's sick or stressed do they go out of your way to help you out because if they can't do that in a like just a basic relationship with without kids or responsibility they're not going to do that in a marriage or with children yeah. And uh, anyways, I'm also just curious how many how many people out there deal with something like this where their partner just completely is not there. Because there's a reason it's in the marriage vows in sickness they're and not, in health. They're not married. 
But I but, think in general, like it speaks to like marriage is like a way that we societally like we say we legitimize relationships and like kind of uphold them to the highest degree. And like I think it's so significant that a part of that is saying like if you want this relationship to be like a centerpiece, lifelong good thing, part of that is the ebbs and flows. And if you have and if you have brothers or guy friends out there who who are pulling this bullshit, like call them out, call them out. Mm hmm. That's yeah. Call your brother. That's what I'm gonna do. I think he would stay home. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> at least but offer <laughs> everyone. You know? Call your brother and offer. make sure he's doing. <laughs> you know, at least take care of your part. At least offer. Be willing to take care of your partner and whatever reasonable expectation that is when they need your help. Yeah. And don't prioritize your own selfish needs. I don't know. It floored me. It just yeah. absolutely floored me. Like. Yeah, I don't. Know. I don't know. And then I'm not trying to like be like I'm the greatest boyfriend of all time, but like. Like, don't you want to be there for your your kid and the mom? And like, you you couldn't like you're standing there at a fucking bar. Maybe it's triggering for me because I used to as a a young man, like in, in, as a teenager, when I fantasized about love, I had this fantasy about I, I like I had this faceless person in my imagination of like you know someone I would love, and this fantasy I had was I had this big night out with the guys. And she got sick. And instead of going out with the guys, like I come and take care of her and like make her soup or some bullshit. That's I don't fucking teenage know. Nick was thinking that about. was teenage. That's what that teenage Nick was so thinking tender. about. Oh my and God. then she would get me sick and then she took care of me and we took care of each other. Like that was my teenage fantasy of like, what is the type of relationship I wanted? I probably got it from my parents, but like, so this idea that like, this, this, this guy would have, a, of would have dream. a child, you know, like, you know, if Jeff, you know, like if I, Jeff. I just, I, I really like taking care of the people I love, you know, like I just, I do. And so it just, it, I do not understand this type of deadbeat mentality of, of not wanting to like, just be there for like what, even to your buddies, you seem like such a loser. I don't think most guys are like, oh yeah, this is like, I feel like a lot of guys in the situation are kind of like, yeah, man, you should probably get home. Like there's always like one deadbeat or two in like every group. And it's just like, even your friends think you're a piece of shit. I feel like, I, I don't know. That's Anyways, I'm just curious if there's more people dealing with stuff like this. And Oh, there are. Yeah. Like the amount of people I know in relationships, whether it's dating or married or somewhere in between. And it's just, it baffles me how low the bar is or like how they are being treated. Because these are girls that I very, very much care about. And the shit that their boyfriends or husbands are pulling it's wild. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't. I just don't know what the like other side of that story is. You know. Wait very quickly. Just follow up. Meatball Gate last year. Oh, meatball. Uh, it's the one no, year anniversary of Meatball Gate. <laughs> there were no meatballs. I didn't make meatballs. Yeah, I I ate. Did you try? I had some turkey. The sides Aww. though. No. Yeah. Fuck no. You didn't have a single side. No. Mm. <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, her cousins. A fiance who we stayed in Hawaii with, and she, I, yeah, I don't like. She she was asking me about it. I'm like, I fucking loathe Thanksgiving meal. I do, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. Hate me all you want. That's that's my cross to bear. What mashed potatoes? No, yeah, I'll eat mashed potatoes and like like I, I no, I don't. I don't think we should be made to eat things we don't enjoy. I'm. I hear that. For like, it, it, I don't. I just don't. <laughs> and if grandma, you know, I, if grandma we are wants so to hate me. so different in this moment. I can't relate to you less. I am not going to put food in my mouth that I have to gag down just because Nick, someone. Nick, you're being so dramatic. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. Okay. I don't enjoy certain foods. I fucking hate Thanksgiving meal. It's the dumbest fucking thing. <laughs> okay. My dad makes an insane cranberry sauce. It is so good. good it's not him. too sweet. There's some pears in it. And like, it is, there's nothing like it. No, I'm disgusted. I, I Do you I, like cranberry sauce? No. And like, it's, it's people have this turkey and these like stuffing. Stuffing is turkey wet sucks. bread. It's wet bread. It's delicious. That's like warmed up with some like herbs Slide in it. Slide it down my throat. And then they have, and then it's like, it's a plate of like, I'm, it's just a plate of like, st ugh. I like, it repulses me. <laughs> Anyway, I had some turkey. Uh, it was fine. But uh, no one really paid attention to it as long as there, I had no meatballs. 
that that is that is my shortcoming. That is my flaw. That is you know I'm you're the food deadbeat of your friend group. I'm the food deadbeat. <laughs> I'm the picky eater who doesn't want to try, you know, Aunt Deb's whatever creation she fucked with. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Nick's grandma made like an oyster casserole of some sort. Disgusting. And you know I put that stuff for it wasn't it wasn't good. No, no, I, that's not what I was going to say. It wasn't bad. Did you? It wasn't bad. I don't want food. Is such an enjoyable experience for me. I do not want to ruin that by trying something that I don't enjoy. Why put something in my body that I have to deal with? I'm on an <laughs> island here. I understand. Like yeah. everyone thinks I'm an asshole, but like it's. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I can't wait for when you like host a big Thanksgiving for the first time and everyone shows up and it's just like meatballs. Tacos, Wait, Jones on third. I do think that could be that could be so fun for you. Like when you are hosting your own like Thanksgivings, maybe you have some kids in the picture, like having <laughs> your own traditional Thanksgiving meal. And then your kids are gonna be like little weirdos who are like, You guys don't They're have like, you, like you guys don't have meatball subs on Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> little, weir eating? little weirdos because we don't have stuffing or cranberry sauce. I do think that would be a very cute family tradition to like have your own Thanksgiving food. That you you like in lieu of the classics steaks, barbecue. I don't know, pizza. Yum. Ugh. Oh, I would do pizza. Yeah. Why do we have to? I'll die on this hill. I don't care. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Anyways, her family was lovely. Uh, I'm sure they're talking shit about me uh, about Thanksgiving food, but it's not for me. It is not for me. Anyway, we have a great episode for you. Katie Maloney is with us. Uh, we talk about divorce and all the ups and downs of that. Some Vanderpump gossip tea, all that. Season uh, 10. Season 10 drama. Uh, we have a great texting office hour. Uh, if you haven't checked out Greg and Victoria's episode, go and check that out. Uh, also, be sure to check out uh, our Ask Nick's. Send in those questions. If you if you have if if you know of a friend if you if you know of some deadbeats in your life, we'd love to hear those stories. Send those in. Uh, all things texting office hours. All things ask Nick. Send in those questions at asknickatcastme.com. Don't forget to check out. Don't text your ex. Happy birthday! Uh, if you are going through a relationship a struggle, if you're not sure if you either want to move in with your partner, if you're not sure if you should stay or go in a relationship, if you are stuck in a situation ship, all of those are covered. In the book, go to vilefiles.com, check it out. There's an audio book, all that fun stuff. Serena Kerrigan is our guest next week on Going Deeper. I know a lot of you uh, are fans of her. She has a diehard fan base. She loves talking relationships and dating. She's a, a delight to talk to, a lot of fun. She's with us next week on Going Deeper. And freestyle next week, I don't know, maybe Justin. Maybe we might have Justin, I think, possibly. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, or we'll just be gossiping about shit. Our favorite thing to do. Yeah. So let's get to Katie. Well, I plan on eating a lot of uh, cookies and uh, treats along the way this holiday season. That's a tradition I have, but also just, you know, oral health. Oral health is key. Don't let your oral health be depleted because of all of those holiday goodies. Recently, I got my Quip toothbrush, and it's great because now I can track all my toothbrushing activity, how long I brush for, where I'm brushing, make sure I get in the back of my mouth because it's pretty. It was it wasn't great back there. It's literally timed so that you're getting a, the, the same clean or very similar clean to when you go to the dentist because they have timed sonic vibrations mm. to get that standard two minute clean that dentists recommend. Over twenty six thousand five star reviews for Quib. How about that? And it was awarded one of Time's 25 Best Inventions, the smart toothbrush. Really? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, I love it. It's great. When you get Quip, you realize just how much you weren't doing. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's just kind of cool software because you can track and improve your brushing with the free Quip app. And then you can also earn rewards by literally keeping up to date with your oral hygiene so you can get free refills, products, Target gift cards. They reward you for using this amazing tool. It's uh, a lightweight and sleek design with no wires or bulky chargers to weigh you down. That's true. It is It is very sleek. Yeah, it looks great. And they start at $25. Electric toothbrushes starting at $25. $25. Amazing. Your oral care could always be better. Make sure your breath is fresh. Make sure you, uh, you're, if you're out there braving the dating world, uh, take care of that oral health out there. Trust me, you got to try it. Go to getquip.com slash V-I-A-L-L right now for your first free refill. Plus, shop Quip's lowest prices of the year this holiday. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com. So go to getquip.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Quip, 
the Good Habits Company. Katie, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. <laughs> <laughs> What's that big sigh for? Oh, it's just been, it's been a week. It's been a week? Yeah. Coming off the, uh, how was your holiday? It was, you know, I, I've been dreading the holidays and I knew it was going to be rough. So, I, I mean, I was trying to be optimistic, but, uh, you know, post-divorce in this first year, there's a lot of firsts that just sting, especially after our first, you know, um, what would have been our, you know, sixth wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. That, like, that week was really rough. We also closed on our house that week. So I knew after that, I was like, I need to brace myself for the holidays because that is going to be a really strange time because, you know, for 12 years, I celebrated with Tom. He was, you know, my family. He was part of my family. And so I just knew it was going to be very different. And I got like all my um, Christmas decorations out of storage. And of course, I was going through like all the ornaments. And there was like, you know, ornaments that were like first Christmas with like a little bride we and groom together, yeah. characters. And like our, you know, after we got our house, like that, you know, Christmas ornament. And then ornaments with our dogs that said the Schwartzes with like our names on it. And I was like, this blows. <laughs> so just been trying to unpack those feelings. I mean, this this year has just been trying to unpack a lot of complicated feelings and try to just push through and, you know, process and heal from it. But, yeah. you know, every time I get over one hump, I met with another mountain. What did you do for the for Thanksgiving? Um, I went to my brother and his wife and um, their place, and my niece obviously is there, and her family. And my mom came into town. My my younger brother and his wife are supposed to come, but there's uh, my nephew was sick, so it was just a small little gathering, and it was lovely and it was nice. But you know, obviously, someone was missing, and that. It was hard to ignore. How did you deal with that? I, I just tried to just have fun, focus on my niece. We did like yoga and <laughs> I, you know, filmed her on her scooter and we played and we, you know, I just tried to just kind of like focus and have a good time and, you know, tequila <laughs> as well. <laughs> Obviously. Are you guys still in any contact whatsoever? Yeah, we we sh we have two dogs that we you know share custody of, so that's okay. kind of like our main contact. We when we separated, we were still living together for like five months, and it was kind of nice to have that time because we were able to sort of untangle, uncouple, you know, during that time and kind of get used to not being together even though we were together but you know we lived in separate rooms and it was you know it was it was but it was nice and Did we you guys date while you were separated like other people yeah <laughs> not for a minute i kind of started to slowly like go on a date here you know i was i was obviously you know because i was the one that initiated it so i kind of was a little further along in the process of moving on or you initiated the divorce yeah how did he take that well not well, Not well, obviously, but well, sometimes <laughs> it's it can be it's never mutual, but sometimes people did he at least acknowledge your frustrations or you know what I'm saying like or was it did you have to completely explain to him why you weren't happy? A little bit of both. Um, a lot of it he didn't agree with or I mean, and these were things that. Over the years, I had been frustrated by, and you know, when we tried to work through it, I felt like I was stonewalled a bit, and I tried to justify and think like, okay, well, maybe this is something that we're going to grow out of, or he's going to grow out of, or we can grow, you know, together. In I just, you know, and then I got to the point where I'm just like, I don't, I don't think this is ever going to change. I don't think he's ever going to change, and you know, I know you can't change a person, but you're just hoping that, you know, it was temporary. And when I just kind of... What was the thing that you wanted most to change? Him to prioritize me. I, f I felt like I came dead last to everyone else in the room, his friends and strangers. And he's such a charismatic, charming guy. Like, everyone loves him. Um, but when it came to me, I didn't feel like I was seen or heard or supported on an emotional level or intellectual level. Um, and it was frustrating. I felt very alone a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Was there a specific moment where you feel like you crossed over from having serious doubts about the marriage to saying this can't continue and like I we need to end this? I think I d- there was kind of a moment where I, I did kind of wake up and things kind of started coming into view. The same things that I had been trying to fix or justify for staying uh, and clinging to the relationship and the marriage because I loved him so much and I wanted the future with him. But when it's like this voice inside of me woke up and just said, you don't want this and you need to be honest with yourself that these are these are things that are probably always going to be present forever. And is this what you want for the rest of your life? Is this is this the kind of person that you want to be with or do you deserve more? And I and I tried to I tried to deny it and not listen to that because it was like maybe I don't know maybe I'm going through something, but it just got louder, and I would lose sleep over it. And I just think it just it it's just that time comes in your life where you just need to reexamine everything and take you know inventory and take stock. And and I you know I wasn't happy, and I hadn't prioritized myself because I was prioritizing someone else as you do sure. in in a marriage in a relationship because it's not all about you all the time but yeah at the expense of myself and my happiness so yeah i when, once i was honest with myself and i was like no i don't want this it it, it felt relief it felt relief yeah. and that was hard and sad for me yeah i mean we, i don't know if we've all been there but i've certainly been in relationships where i ended and when I ended it, I didn't feel sad. I felt free. I felt, mm. I felt relief. It was, <laughs> it was everything at once. It was, it was pain and sadness and relief. <sighs> yeah, it was a lot at once. Did you guys wish each other a happy Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah. Do you think you will next? Do you think you will on Christmas? Like, when does that stop for you? I don't know because we tried to be friends and. I wanted, to, you know, because at the end of the day, like, I, he was still my best friend. Sure. And I wanted that to remain intact just because our marriage and the, you know, the romantic relationship had to end. I really wanted us to maintain a friendship. And we were. But there's, you know, interferences that start to come in. And and how you handle it is, you know, going to reflect in it on how how well that can remain intact. And I don't think he did a very good job of that. You know, I tried to say, okay, if we, if we want to be friends, you know, you got to ask for like some boundaries. Mm-hmm. But when people don't know what boundaries are, it's very difficult to have that conversation. Sure. It's also, I mean, <laughs> I mean, anything is possible. There are exceptions to every rule. I just, I think it's hard enough to try to have, try to be friends after uh, any type of relationship and let alone yeah. a marriage or a relationship that lasting 12 years, I mean, how do you go back to that? How do you how do you turn off that part of your brain that saw them as that saw that other person as like your other half to an extent and then and then be friends? It's it's I I don't know. I just tried to I wanted to still honor and and bring some value to the time we spent together and sure. not just walk away. It feels so weird to to have that person in your life who you were planning on spending forever with. And then to have them just become a stranger to you, that feels so wrong to me. Yeah, but it's not wrong though. I know, but I just... It, it feels, <laughs> yeah. I think the only way you can try to do that is you honor it by, by not trying to dilute it in a, like to, to be friends. Because to be friends would almost suggest that like the fact that it feels wrong, the fact that it would be so hard to be friends like shows that you guys cared and it shows that you guys had something because if it was like, Oh no, no, we're best friends. It's like, Oh, so you like, you were (laughs) friends the whole time. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Where there wasn't really like, I'm sure you guys were also best friends, but Mm -hmm. in addition to being best friends, you were husband and wife and serious in a serious relationship Right. where I think sometimes you see couples you're just like, I think they're just friends. You know, they, they're, you see the friendship, but you don't see the romance. And I think sometimes while it feels foreign or fucked up or things like that, I think you are in a way honoring what you had by not trying or not being able to be friends because it shows that it was more (laughs) than just some sort of like casual acquaintance or friendship, you know? 
Uh, true. I, yeah. And, but but when we have, you know, dogs that we're trying to go back and forth, well, so that, we, we have, not, yeah. and we also work together. We have mutual friends. Yeah. We share friends. So it's like, I thought it would be in our best interest to really try to work on a friendship with one another to keep things. Well, yeah, but I think there's being a fr- there's being having a friendship and being friendly. Yeah, but are you even able to be friendly at this point? I'm trying, but I just feel like there's been a lot of disrespect. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is this something that like have you for filming season ten? Like, where was that within the divorce? And like, is there anything? How was the idea of this potentially playing out on Vanderpump influencing the way you were navigating the situation with him? I was grateful that we had put a lot of because we we separated in February and we didn't start filming until July. So I was I was grateful that we had a lot of kind of road behind us. Mm-hmm. We'd made a lot of progress. So I felt good about going into the season being like, okay, this isn't it's not so so fresh. But it's, you know, when we went into the season, it, uh, that's when all those, you know, interferences began. Because we, you know, we felt great. We, we were laying a foundation for a friendship and we both, you know, were kind of same page about a lot of things. But, you know, uh, there was a lot of people that weren't very supportive of that. Was some of that res- disrespect that you felt from the whole Raquel of it all? Oh, God. I have no loyalty to her. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously, but... There's so much more to that. Uh, can you elaborate? Not really. Can Have you, you talked? <laughs> Have you and Raquel talked? No. No. I mean, we did a lot of talking this past summer. So, yeah. That's why That's why the, the, I felt a little disrespected. Did, did you and Tom ever talk about that hookup? Yeah. What did you say? <laughs> uh, I can't really say because it's, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just, I think, I think there's a lot of theories um, about what went down and how it went down and what exactly happened. And my, you know, what people think about me and my thoughts and opinions on it and whether or not I should have any thoughts and opinions on it. But it's just how it, just how everything kind of played out that just felt really gross to me how are you able to handle like people being friends with raquel and being friends with you i mean be friends with you don't you want i mean as long as it it, and for me like respect is always you know the most important thing so if like as, as long as your friendship with her doesn't really affect our friendship you know if you're able to still have you know respect for me and and I feel like our friendship isn't really being impacted by your relationship with someone, then be friends with who you want. So you, well, that's most people don't have that quality, the, that kind of maturity to I say. I didn't always have that. I was so, when I was younger, I was like, if if you like this person, if you talk to this person, <laughs> we can't be friends. And I realized that that's not really how you should move through life. How did you get to that more kind of healthy, mature approach to relationships? Just by the trial and error, error of it all, by having falling outs with friends, by getting into fights with people over that this th- that very you know thing, and I realized if I want to you know maintain friendships with people who I care about, I have to respect who they also want to be friends with. You know, it's yeah. just it's the adult thing to do. Do we still stand by calling Raquel a fan? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What what about her is a fan? I mean. I, <laughs> that's so I, I didn't even like think so much about it I just thought it was like a funny thing to say that's funny there's nothing wrong with being a fan but I just felt like it was just it's a bit much you know be a supportive friend be a fan of them I, I'm a fan of my friends and I support my friends but it was a little over the top what about her wearing a Tom Tom sweatshirt to BravoCon <laughs> I mean, I understand because they all wore them to Tom's show the night before. So it felt like that was an appropriate venue and time to wear it. But yeah, wearing it at BravoCon was a little bit like. It was a statement. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, I feel like it was yeah a bit of a statement. I mean, do you feel like she is trying to like rile, rile you up or get you to react to her? I I don't even I don't even know if it's about me. I, I don't think it's like directly about trying to like rile me up. I think she just, it's like she just wants to prove 
her, you know, friendship or the, you know, it's, a, it's, I don't know. It's, I think it's just to just kind of just garner any kind of attention really. Where are you at in your love life? <sighs> I mean, I'm just da like dating uh, casually. Um, I haven't been wanting to like get into anything serious obviously because I'm still trying to make myself a priority and make my happiness a priority and I feel like when someone else comes into the picture you know you want to make them important and and that requires a lot of effort and I don't really have that to give to a person at the moment so right now you're just focused on you really yeah but I'm still open to like getting to know people and who knows if if the man of my dreams if that person walks in tomorrow I'll know it then and obviously you know, that's something different, but I just, that's, that's really not in the scope for me. So the people want to know, I have a question from by from Ali. Are you still dating the 25 year old you were dating in October? <laughs> no. I mean, again, that was a casual. First of all, good for you. Thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's something I think that kind You're of having fun. got a little blown out of proportion. Um, no, he's the sweetest person ever, but, um, yeah, again, just sort of like a, like very casual thing. <laughs> Which castmate would you not like at a sandwich at something about her? Oh God, if it was up to me, it's hard because, you know, much like again with the whole being able to be friends with people and respect that they're friends with people that I don't like. Ariana is my business partner and she's obviously friends with people that I am not friends with. So unfortunately, I may not get my way. But obviously if I didn't have to see, you know, people like... <laughs> or Kel, or, you know, um, then yeah. But unfortunately, you know, it's going to have to be an open door to, to whoever. You just, oh, you're just prioritizing being the bigger person. Is it coming easier for you, or is it, like, is it emotionally taxing? It's, it would be more, it would, it would, it would take more energy, I think, to, to put up those, those walls with people. So it's, it's easier just to, no. You know. What has, I mean, so for all the crap parts about getting divorced and the sadness and the holidays, what has been, for the people listening who are going through breakups, who have left relationships that they weren't happy with, what are some positives that you've been able to experience? What have been some moments where you feel good about the decision that you made for yourself? Like, where are some... Bring some hope to this picture for the people <laughs> listening who are starting fresh, who are starting new, who are at similar stages in life. What have been some positives? Yeah, it's it's truly not all doom and gloom. I think when you really do take, you know, that it's it's terrifying, obviously, to make that kind of step in your life and that bold choice. Um, but I think being able to really just prioritize your life and take – your future into your own hands and make that the priority, make your happiness your priority, it's, it is it is a blessing, honestly. I get to do whatever I want whenever I want. And it's, you know, I don't have to think about anyone else's feelings and how they feel about it and how, you know, how it's going to affect them. It's, it's really just what does Katie want and how it's going to make her feel. And, and, you know, at first I was so scared of, you, you know, starting over, even though it's not starting over, it's just, you know, rebuilding a little bit off of like, you know, how far I've come. But it was still just like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to sell our house and I'm going to move into like my own apartment. I'm going to live alone for the first time in over, a, you know, decade. And that terrified me and just my whole future was planned out with this person. And, and, and now it's just, that's all just out the window. But now the possibility of just like anything can happen and who knows where I'll be. And it's, it's very exciting to me. So I think just that excitement of what the future could hold and bring, I'm just embracing that. When you're thinking about your person, your dream man, whatever that looks uh, like to you now, how, how does that look to you now versus how it looked to you 10 years ago? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Totally. Di I'm a totally different person than I was 10 years ago. I think I mean, now. What are the qualities you prioritize in, in a relationship and a partner that you didn't before? Well, I mean, before it was just like he needs a job and a car, <laughs> and the, you know, those kind of things. Now, obviously, those things would be nice. No, I want somebody who has has kind of grown through all those those self discovery phases of their life. They know 
who they are and where they're going and what they want to do with their life. They're not trying to figure things out. They don't, they're not trying to figure out who they are. Um, and somebody who is going to, again, support me and be my, you know, partner in, in life, be my teammate, someone who knows how to prioritize their person, but also is going to still allow for like that individual growth. I like, I'm still a very like independent person. So I'm never going to be one of those like we people. So somebody that has, you know, kind of their own thing going on, their own, you know, career, all of that, but is going to be very supportive of me still, you know, pursuing my dreams. But it sounds like you didn't feel like you had like a lot of balance in your last relationship. No, I feel like a lot of times I was wearing the pants and the dress and I don't want to do that. I need a little bit more alpha energy in my next partner, I think. Okay. Well, describe that to me. What do you what do you mean by that? Someone that's going to be a little more take charge. Someone that's going to make some plans and want to take a little bit more initiative in the relationship and in, you know, in our life together. As opposed to I feel like I was the one having to make plans and and whether it would be for vacation or, you know. You kind of ran the household, so to speak. Yeah. And listen, there's nothing wrong with that or women that do that. But I want somebody that's going to just step into that role a little bit more seamlessly and more, you know, fluid. Was it more just like Tom or it was just, I'm, I'm just here. I don't know really much about him, <laughs> uh, but it sounds, I, I'm, I'm hearing like a version of like, it sounds like he just, he prioritized fun. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely liked having fun and spending time with his friends and, you know, like, and, and a lot of times that was so great. Like, I liked that he had that sort of outlook on life and enthusiasm, you know, and, and, and what, what do you want to call that? Enthusiasm, you know, for Zest life. Zest for life. Like, <laughs> childlike yeah. wonder. Yeah, child, like, yeah. yeah, a lot of times it was like, it was refreshing, but, you know, not that I want someone who's like so so serious, but someone who's just a little bit more serious that, that yeah, wants it's, it's a little more settled. It's fun to be dating the fun person, the energetic person who's always out there, and 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 that can be really exciting. But when you you spend most of your relationship alone with each other, even if you're an outgoing couple, even if you're a couple that's traveling a lot or going to parties, you still spend a lot of time just with each other, and that's it. Though that's kind of the meat of a relationship. Like, how can you guys be alone with each other and make each other feel like a priority? Right. And uh, if you if you can't have that, it doesn't matter how much fun. <laughs> but you yeah. Have. No. Yeah. We have. We had so much fun. We did. We went on so many adventures together. We had. You know. And I and I love that. And I'll miss those like memories. But I'm not going to miss. You know, wondering what time he's going to come home, and you know. Yeah. You want to adult a little bit in your relationship. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you kids or is kids something you still want to do or have any interest in? <sighs> I mean, it's it's a little hard sitting where I'm sitting now, being you know single and not even having any kind of prospect because I go back and forth because you know I obviously like yeah like that would be great, but it's not something I want to do alone. That's something I always envision doing with another person, going halves. On a, on a baby with someone who I love and want to like build a family with. It's also a little scary just with the state of the world and society that we're in, thinking about bringing life into this world. I, it, it scares me a bit. I'm not saying that I'm always going to feel that way, but I don't know. I go back and forth. You're unsure. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Do we have any other burning uh, Vanderpump questions before we get into some of our tea? I was just going to ask what your current relationship is with Stassi and Kristen. Like, it felt like you guys were kind of a trio. Now you're the one mm -hmm. left. Is it awkward? Awkward in the sense of, like... They're not on the show. Yeah. No, I mean, I feel like sometimes I want to not always bring up the show and talk mm -hmm. about the show. It was a little hard at first, but it's... They've come around to it. I mean, we don't all like the three of us hang out like we used to anymore, but mm -hmm. I still have relationships with them both. Like, uh, you know, Stassi is, you know, still like my girl, like my best friend and I'm godmother to her daughter Hartford. And so, yeah, it's just things have changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But no, it's not. I wouldn't say it's awkward. Do you feel like it's still a sensitive issue for them? Or do you think they kind of moved on? I wouldn't say it's as sensitive anymore. I think they've They've moved on. Do you think there's any chance there could be a reunion 
in the future with them in the show? Oh God, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think the show has changed so much that, and their lives have changed so much, especially Stassi that mm, who knows, but I don't know if it would make the most sense. And I don't know how they would even feel about it at this point. Okay, that makes sense. I'm curious who, like which of your castmates you feel like the version that you know, one-on-one, no cameras, uh, that version is most different to what's portrayed on the show. Like not necessarily negative or positive, but just like where you feel like there's a really big difference between like what you see on TV and what you kind of experience firsthand. Oh, God. <laughs> Sounds like a great question. It is a really good question. I mean, I feel like, well, I, I mean, I feel like a lot of people really are their, you know, true selves, you know, uh, but on camera and off camera. But I think a lot of them don't realize that. <laughs> I will say that. But I do think some people are a little bit more image conscious when we are filming and they want to maybe like try to like self produce a little bit. I know I'm not giving names because I I don't want to create a war. Come on. I know, I know, on. I know, I know. But, you know, I feel like... You who know, could... How do we frame it in a, in a more positive well, way? Well, in a positive way, like, who do you think maybe gets yeah. the most... Like, who do you think you would kind of <laughs> say... Who is the most authentic people? Yeah, or who would you who say... Who don't do that? Totally. Or, like, who maybe on the show comes off, like, maybe gets a bad rap, or you feel like what you know of them, you would really go to bat for them and kind of defend them in a way that people who just see the show might not know that. Um. Yeah, well, the thing is with the, with shows like this and, like, with any kind of reality shows, like, it's really hard to show people in their truest form because we're very you know, we've got layers, we're multidimensional. So you you become kind of one note characters or people on a show like this. Yeah. You get, you, you you almost get like typecasted. Like this is the villain. This is you get the siloed. bitch. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a little hard to, you know, for people to sort of separate or, you know, depart from, from those kind of like typecasted things. Like I feel like I've been all looked at in certain ways because I could be a very direct person and the way I approach things and sometimes that I, I know that comes off how like I can come off like I'm a bitch or heartless but I can't help the way I am and so I've tried to like correct my tone and my delivery with things but it's it's never gonna I don't know I think it's never gonna change I know like I feel like Lala has a lot more of a softer side to her and a lot of her sort of the way she kind of talks and and pe- it rubs people the wrong way a lot of the time, but it's all that's that's such stick stick for her, even in regular life that it's it's all just funny, but I think a lot of people you know take it a little too seriously. So I think she kind of gets a bad rap in a lot of ways. There's not a lot of room for sarcasm on reality <laughs> TV uh-huh. uh, or if you are sarcastic, it's they it's very easy to work with as an editor with sarcasm, oh, yeah, and because tone is so easily taken away or context is so easily taken away Fully. so if you are if you're a sarcastic person and you choose to be sarcastic in those you it's just like it's kind of a liability yeah i mean like you have no idea it can go yeah like don't ever don't ever make a sarcastic comment about someone someone's dick because that will be taken <laughs> fully to heart yeah <laughs> I don't. What did what did you say? Tom and I were, have, we were having an argument one time in the car, and he had this habit of like always kind of blaming me for all the issues and the arguments and the fights. And you know, we would we would go through like massive dry spells of like not like having sex for a long time. And I was like kind of getting upset with him. I'm like, why am I the one that's constantly getting blamed for like all of our fights and all of our arguments? Like, what if I like was like, oh, well, your dick doesn't work, and that's why we don't like have sex. Everything was kind of like chopped up and taken out of context. So like I was like, well, let's talk about how your dick doesn't work then. Like, you mm-hmm. know, and it was like a kind of a sarcastic, but like also like I was frustrated and pissed off. So I was like, everyone's like, oh, I can't believe she you would talk. There. And I'm like, it wasn't, I wasn't saying like it, he's like ED or something. I was just saying like, what if I was just blaming? Sure. It's as, it's as ridiculous as him blaming me for all of our problems. Me saying that's the reason why we like don't have sex. So again can't make sarcastic comments. Well, that was, so Julia Fox, when she was on Z-Way, one of the segments they did was talking about how big Kanye West Yee's penis was. And I'm curious, like, in terms of what is is really like a violation of someone's privacy and like information that shouldn't be shared versus like, you know, we're all out here 
if public figures who are kind of part of the deal is knowing that like a lot of your personal matters are going to be public, like where do you think the line is in terms of like when it's unacceptable to share something with the world? I mean, I don't know why any do you think a man would be mad about that? I don't know. But um all depends I, I, on what you say. What did they say about their the, he has a big penis or something? Well, yeah. Who? Kanye. 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 Is that appropriate? Yeah, that's kind of the question because it's like obviously people would say if you're like if you're like he has a so tiny dick, me, yeah. like yeah. that's people would be like that's me. But like yeah, is it, is it it's yeah. it a compliment? I don't know. It's a, it's I mean, Pete Davidson stand up was pretty funny about this when he talked about how Ariana Grande <laughs> talked about it and I'm I'm paraphrasing but it sounded like he jokingly were, was like I have a perfectly nice sized dick. And she talked about it as if it was like some sort of like python. <laughs> and so every girl I hook up with going forward oh, no. is now disappointed, which is it was a really funny joke. But to that extent, like, is is that OK if to to like talk about like our our partner's anatomies in a public? I mean, I don't I don't know. Like, yeah. what do we think about yeah. that? Like, and, 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 or is it good if they compliment? It's like, oh, well, as long as you say something nice, it's totally fine. It's like, he had a cute little... It's like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was cute little. It was adorable. It was really cute. <laughs> no, I don't mean little, but like, you know, cute. He's just like, a little guy. Just, but it was like adorable. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I remember, yeah, Tom, one time we were, he was like talking about like his penis and he's like, oh, I've got a... D-. And I was just like, what are you, what are you, why are you talking like this? It's like, it's a, like, I was kind of trying to like, humble him no 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 way. but also like joking with him humbling i'm like uh you're giving yourself a lot of props but just because he never talks like that first of all and i was just like wondering why he was talking like that especially when we had cameras pointed at us i was like this is so awkward do um, we think all men's voices go deeper when talking about their own penises or when they're around other men for sure <laughs> yeah i i don't know i mean i think i think you draw the line at any kind of like medical information that yeah. no HIPAA be... violations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, anatomy is a little bit of a sore subject. I, I guess. wouldn't want anyone talking about me, like especially an ex too. Yeah, like well, and don't of, go on a podcast. And talk of about course, there's life. like additional gender dynamics that, like, you know, it's not exactly a one for one. But if so, even if someone was like, "She had the best pussy in the world," I'd be like, ew, "Keep that to ew. yourself." Yeah, yeah. Weird. and yeah. never like, tell weird. anyone. Like, how? <laughs> Like, I just don't feel like it's your right to talk about someone else. I don't know. It'd be one thing if Kanye went on a podcast was like, so it is this large. Yeah. That's even weirder, I think, when someone wants to go and talk about their own. <laughs> just like. Yeah, it's a no I, win did for anyone a guy. Ask? You, can't, you can't talk about it. Yeah, I don't know. Because you're either projecting or you're lying or you're, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sus. Um, on the topic of Pete Davidson, we have more Pete Davidson Amrata sightings in public. And recently, a, a source who's close to the couple oh. said in talking about kind of how their budding romance was coming together and what she sees in him, said she finds him charming and funny. He's a passionate guy and plans great dates. Um, Emily is still taking it slowly. She's intrigued and flattered. And I feel it's like that kind of... Such a fake relationship. You think it's fake? Completely. You don't? I don't know. Did you not see those TMZ like videos of her like walking back and forth and then Pete Davidson like rolling up in his car and then him leaving and then him, her like texting and then calling an Uber? Like, well, maybe you know? they were trying to just like evade the, the, the paparazzi. I, I don't, and, and no, don't, 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 no disrespect to both of them. They seem like lovely people. And like, I love a good PR stunt as much as the next, but I, I, I personally just, have a hard time believing in its authenticity. It seems well, like a very convenient. I thought that program. him and Kim K was PR, and like, can he not? It seems like he has a pretty good a, a reputation. Yeah, I think he just falls hard, but that and like quickly. But that doesn't mean it's not genuine. I also, okay. I think this particular relationship is very much staged. But I wonder if. Oh, sorry. Go but, ahead. But why? Okay, but for what? For well, just because we're talking attention. about it. attention, <laughs> right? But I don't know. I mean, couldn't he date anyone at this point and just get attention? Yeah, for dating someone. Well, period. Yeah, but I, f I, I feel like it's mutually beneficial. And why would Pete Davidson not want? Like, he just. It's like he's become this guy that these incredibly, you know, talented, successful, beautiful women like 
rebound with. And why would he say no to that? Like, yeah, sure. Like, I'll go out to a Knicks game with her. Great. Well, say I, I I plan dates too. Excellent. Awesome. I'm like, why would he say no to this? And and maybe they, maybe they could hook up. It's just it's just it's so it was so obvious that it's just like it just was. It just I could be wrong. Yeah. It just feels a bit like a PR stunt. I feel, but I feel like he's been dating these like successful, beautiful women before, you know, for some time. Started with like what, Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. Who was after that? So it's just become a joke. I feel like no, but though. he proposed to Ariana Grande. That yeah. I, that was real. Oh, that one was real, but the rest of them are fake. <laughs> well, okay. I know. I, I don't know which one. I think this one. Okay. For sure. Okay. I she- I have a hard time believing it i could be wrong you're a hater May- maybe yeah i'm a hater I hate <laughs> you are a both. total hater on do you this think one. kim was real do you think his relationship with kim was, was real i don't know he tad he branded her name my girl is a lawyer yeah maybe it and was then, but yeah branded her name it, i like, think he it, definitely was into kim for sure i think he's into all of them okay yeah, probably too <laughs> but here's my here's my theory is that because we like, have- i think he's totally down but I just don't think it's going to go anywhere. But it feels like there's always the narrative of like they're out of his league is kind of like the vibe <laughs> with a lot of. I'm not, I, he's clearly in their league. I mean, he's look at who he's dating. OK, so <laughs> but you know what I'm saying where there's like some sense of like when people talk about it, it's kind of like why Pete Davidson? Like of all the people, like why him? And I wonder if uh, he seems like someone who has a really healthy ego in the sense that it doesn't seem like it's if anything, maybe it's like too self-deprecating. And I wonder if he maybe has this mentality of like, because he feels so like happy go lucky, how did I even end up end up here dating these beautiful women? Like he keeps putting in the effort, like he keeps planning the dates. He never takes it for granted and he really shows up for them in a way that's like very desirable. No, I feel like he has like this quiet confidence. Have you seen him on the last season of the Kardashians when they went to the Met together? Mm -hmm. He's just chilling. He's got his full fit on his son glasses he has he has yeah he has his own confidence to be clear this is not me like not believing that emrata would be into pete davidson i totally would believe that those two could be an item i just think based off of like just the trajectory of what's going on in each of their lives (laughs) it's clearly like if i'm a publicist i'd be like you should date pete davidson like this is the move like you know what i'm saying i just that's what i'm doubting like it's not that they wouldn't otherwise in another universe be an item i could totally picture she seems like she's into like a pete davidson type of guy honestly but i just don't think i think and if it turns into something i just feel like it's this has been more hey how about we uh, set up a date with you and Pete and see what happens? I just have never understood the PR relationships in general. Like, especially if you're already like a very famous person. Like, why don't you just like d- date? Like, sure, literally? but you re- you know, you recognize it happens. Well, yeah, I just, I don't understand it. I would bet everything I have that those two won't end up together. Well, no, because I'm wondering, okay, so he might be able to get all these hot, attractive females, but also it's like, if he's got this funny, quiet confidence to him, someone's going to have to match him on that same level. And I'm not saying that th- these women don't, but it's also like, I don't know. And as Pete Davidson, maybe <laughs> his playbook, isn't he just about reaching out? Like it's it's all these women who are getting out of these very serious long-term relationships. And maybe that's his thing. Maybe he's just like, maybe he doesn't want to date them. Maybe he's just like, I, th- I'm funny. I'm fun to be around. Like who doesn't want a funny, good to be around type of guy <laughs> when they're sad about a heartbreaker being cheated on? And like I'm that guy, and he's just like. Maybe but that would mean that he's not committal, and it seems like he very much is. What What about him seems committal? Branding someone's name on his body, getting that, engaged after a matter of weeks. <laughs> uh, that sounds reactive, not committal to me. And that, that okay. sounds maybe Sending immature. Someone dibs on their private chat. <laughs> yeah, just because you're willing to like move fast and say crazy shit or do crazy shit in a relationship, like we've all like have done that. We've all been in relationships where like, oh my god, it's amazing to be like, oh shit, oh no. And I don't know this, Pete, but like maybe he hasn't learned from that. But I don't think making grand gestures means that you're ready for a commitment. It might you might like the idea of it. And Maybe he is. Maybe he's like, let's get married tomorrow. Maybe everyone he's dating, he's just like, let's do this. And maybe that's what, but none of these relationships are lasting all that long or going anywhere. True. I don't know. I mean, I feel like most dudes, they they just can't even 
commit to like hanging out. So oh, is that? <laughs> oh, he's got. He's making uh, reservations. It's <laughs> not, yeah, it sounds Maybe. like if he's willing to do that, like that sounds like a little bit more of a commitment. Than... But also, couldn't you? Hot take. Couldn't you argue marriage is just a grand gesture? <laughs> like you know, like when we're but talking about a, like what? it's a sustained grand gesture. It's not like oh, let me do a trip or let me do one big purchase. That is years. It's the uh, well. I mean, he did his getting tattoos, but you know, when you have that many tattoos, they all blend together. No, the brand, blend the branding together. is a little bit more of a just just getting a tattoo. Wait, he branded. He what? branded Kim. He branded Kim on his body, like the burn. yeah. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Nuts. Would you? You don't do you have a Natalie tattoo? No. Would either of you consider getting tattoos of like either of a partner's like something that's like very specifically related to them or something that's like very closely linked to them where you know it's that to it's no. like for them? No. Oh my god, this looks painful. I would I would consider it if I were married, but it would be small and like easy to cover up. Yeah. Would you do a tattoo instead of a ring? That's what people I feel like sometimes people do. I mean maybe. I feel like that's the equivalent of a tattoo prenup. Being like, I want it small and easy to cover up. <laughs> yeah. 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 How romantic. <laughs> I uh I don't I don't think romance is maybe you're I, I just don't think romance happens every day by showing up for your partner and proving that you still want to be with them, you still want to make it work and make them priority. I don't think romance is like these kind of grand gestures that's like, oh, well, it's an ink, so I can't mm. get rid of it. Or, you know, or e even like saying, oh, well, like, I'll love you forever. Like, great. But like five years from now, as you know, and as, like we, I haven't been divorced, but I know that relationships end, you know, and you have to, you have to show up every day. So I, I personally just, the grand gestures don't mean much to me anymore. It's about showing up oh, every day. 100% because I was talking to someone um, recently and she has been div divorced and remarried. And, you know, people talk about, you know, they, you get married and, you know, the, the divorce should just never be an option. It should always be an option because if people just get content and comfortable in their relationship and they think that they can take advantage of their partner because they're never going anywhere, like that is the kiss of death because I think yes romance and intimacy should be something that is um a choice and something that is, should be intentional and something that you choose every day marriage is something that you should have to choose every single day if that's something that you you know choose to participate in yeah do you see yourself getting married again I'm not against it um I just I <laughs> divorce is really painful you know um so I'm like oh god the thought of that I'm like but I mean, but yeah, if I met someone and they wanted to marry me, I'd be like, well. You're not against it. Not against, it, not against no. it, no. Yeah. Do you feel like you have a like any central piece of advice on healing from divorce? I think it's, I mean, you obviously have to feel everything, you know. I don't think you can, you can't bury any of it. I think it's really important to really just go through all the emotions and process everything and really like like ask yourself how everything is making you feel. <sighs> yeah, that's that's the only way is just to go through it and not try to avoid the difficult or complicated feelings that come with it. Therapy really helps. What else we got? Totally. Well, I was thinking, so Black Friday, I feel like some people, it's a part of their Thanksgiving, like just as <laughs> much as cutting the turkey, it's like the next day they're out there shopping. Other people, it's like, disgusting capitalism at its worst i'm curious like what your take on black friday is i i forgot that it happened <laughs> okay i mean other than the fact that oh by the way natural habits 65 percent off code black 22 um uh, and 65 yeah that's wow. it's our only sale of the year and until supplies last but anyway uh i don't participate as a consumer in black friday no i've never i've never gone black friday shopping i'd rather chop my limbs off than have to like go you stand in a line for hours or like deal with crowds. I hate crowds in general, but in the, the deals, you can't really beat the deals. I like the Cyber Monday. If I can like sit at home and shop online, I love shopping online. So when the, you see those deals. If, are the Black Friday deals better than the Cyber Monday deals? Like do they reward people for waiting in line at four in the morning? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't even know if 
the Black Friday deals or what they were. I saw I saw a funny TikTok and this guy was talking about, he's like, what are these Black Friday deals? 25% off? He's like, that's like some Memorial Day yeah. stuff. And like the way people go, the people get into like fist fights over game consoles and flat screen TVs. And it's just- Did you see that video about the flat screen TV? Like some two guys were- like trying to rip it out of each other's hands and then they started stomping on it because they were mad. Yeah. I feel like there's one of those like every oh, every year. Yeah. Every yeah. I do enjoy even though I don't like participating in Black Friday, I do like the the videos. But I feel like Truly. the shopping online has somewhat decreased the amount of crazy we see. I mean, I just remember videos growing up of the second Best Buy open, people were sprinting inside and I feel like we don't see yeah, quite that volume anymore. Camping outside. Yeah. I was like you'll never catch me camping outside of a a store. Yeah, I mean, listen, if, if 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 you want the TV and that's the only way to get it, I guess good on you. But. I think there's something probably it's, exhilarating about it. It is. I personally, I love a deal. We did it a few <laughs> years in a row growing up. It used to like a family event. You would like, yeah, we would you know, do after it after dinner, you'd go wait outside at the Walmart. Oh, not overnight, but we know. would do it with the people we grew up across the street with. And it was the two moms and the four girls. And we'd wake up at like five in the morning and go. And we at one point, got a bunch of stuff at like a, a department store and we got the giant stall in the dressing room because there was five of us. And then all of a sudden there was like a knock on the door and my mom comes in. She has like ices and popcorn. And she was like, time for supplements. So we just took <laughs> over an entire stall and stayed there for probably an hour trying on clothes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Do you feel like you're like, because I feel like everybody, obviously everyone likes a deal, but like some people like a deal. I consider myself one of them. Would you consider yourself someone who's like a real, like really appreciates a bargain or are you kind of more of the mindset that like- Like, do you like a deal so much that you buy it for the deal not even needing yes. the item that you're buying? No. I, I mean, listen, I like Costco, but I don't necessarily, yeah, it's, I'm not really like a deal gal. You sound like Cindy and I'll be like, every, my Cindy is my housekeeper and I'll be like <laughs> out of hot sauce and the next thing I know, she'll bring like 20 Cholulas. <laughs> she's like it was by 20 she's like, get well, one at Costco, free. <laughs> they're on sale i'm like well i what am i gonna do with 20 of these i mean yeah. listen costco does have great deals on like alcohol and there's certain things that i'm like okay well you gotta go to costco for this because it's you can get it for a better price mm -hmm. you know those yeah. kind of things are, but i don't i don't necessarily need like the value size things i don't need like giant ju jugs of peanut butter you know yeah. it's but they, I don't know. There is something exciting about Costco, but I don't know if I've ever been into a Costco. What? 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 Should we take vile files on the road? No, yeah. that's not true. I went to Costco in Hawaii. Hawaii that doesn't count. Yeah. That seems what? far too fun. <laughs> had good steaks, but yeah. I don't think I've been to a Costco in the states because I remember it was I was with Nally's uh, cousin. And we were staying with him in Hawaii, and I remember being like, "Oh, this is a Costco." What? what? Isn't it? Isn't it like a Sam's Club basically? Yeah. Yeah. Was the Hawaiian one? I just envision it being way cooler than. It just looked like it felt like I was in a Sam's Club. Oh, okay. you could probably get a huge box of those chocolate covered macadamia nuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably a bunch probably. of pineapples. But they have like the samples, and then even if you don't want the samples, the food at Costco. Yeah, they have that. Um, they have the pizza first. All their pizza is really good, and then they have they this their like own brand. Well, they have like a food court. Yeah. Where it's so yeah. cheap. I remember when I was a like, kid, it's like a soda for 35 cents yeah. or something. Yeah. A, should I have Cindy take me? Yeah. What is that like we berry film twist it. thing? The soft oh, serve with yeah, the berry. Because they have the soft serve that's like vanilla and chocolate, but they also have the berry kind of smoothie situation. Is it's creamy. Like, is it like it's a good. sorbet almost? Or? I don't know. It, it was like a soft serve and it had yeah. this like berry like swirl of like this like kind of like a, not a jam, but I don't know. Listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If there is one like Costco style item that you could have in your house at all times, guaranteed unlimited supply, what would you pick? Oh gosh, tequila. <laughs> I was gonna say Kirkland tequila, the, Kirk the, the Kirkland, shield one, the big one. <laughs> the Kirkland, the Kirkland vodka and tequila are superior. They're good. They're great. And the vodka is huge. It's, it's huge. So small. <laughs> it's so big. But you can also, but you can always get a good deal on a flat screen. So you don't ever, I don't know. I just think that like Black you can Friday, get a new flat you, can also, you can also get your eyes checked there. You can get your contacts there. They have a whole jewelry counter. Can, yeah, travel Costco travel. I, I am missing out. I got a body pillow recently at Costco, <laughs> and I think it has really helped me become a little less uh, physically it? needy in my relationship. <laughs> you can also buy pants and underwear and socks. Wasn't there. Costco the place that you could return anything? At any time, no matter how long you owned it for, was that? I think L.L. Bean and maybe REI. 
But L.L. Bean for That's sure used to do that. L.L. Bean Maybe, is not Maybe, I don't know. I don't know about Costco, but... Like you could wear a sweater for a year and just bring it back if you had the balls to like return <laughs> it. They, they would. But I wonder if like, if it's kind of a reverse psychology thing when stores do that, where they're sort of like trying to be like the nice guy. Yeah. You know, so it's then all, you so then you don't feel don't as like know, contentious thought, and like oh you like you swindled me and I'm returning this like so some items do need to be returned within 90 days but with few exceptions Costco does have a 100% satisfactory guarantee simply bring back the product to any Costco warehouse and our member services team will be happy to assist you wow they said assist you doesn't yeah. doesn't mean <laughs> it's foolproof but they'll try hey. they'll have a conversation yeah. it's a negotiation <laughs> going on. <laughs> Good luck. So Kendall Jenner and Devin Booker are once again off again. This <sighs> so is a notorious on up. again, off again relationship. We don't know if it's final this time, but ac- according to reps and whatnot, it was because of busy schedules, which what do we that make of that? was why they broke up last time. They said they, they had too busy of careers. So we can expect them to rekindle this in six months or something, basically. Also, like, who cares? <laughs> do people care about that? I don't know. I like listen. The Kardashians? I like, no, I like Kendall, but like this boyfriend, I don't know. It seems like I, I don't know. I we don't. I don't see enough of them. I'm not invested in that relationship whatsoever. What uh, what's a what celebrity couples are you invested in? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I'm I like a Courtney and Travis. Mm-hmm. If we're gonna stay on the Kardashian, Courtney and Travis, I really am into. Okay. Do you like Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox? I feel like they're cousins yeah if you like um, one they are not like cousins. <laughs> you know i know there's i think i think i think it's like controversial very like unpop. I, I don't know but i actually like don't doesn't do mind them to get no i i'm kind of like i think they're i think it's a good like match oh M- machine gun kelly and Megan Fox. Fox. Yeah. other people not like them I think it's like a little bit you either hate it or you like it I don't same know. with kravis well it's like if you like a, a kind of a a pouring of affection in a relationship, a lot of tongue, <laughs> and a lot of like, yeah, PDA. Then you're you do. I like a nice like horned up couple. Why not? Yeah, but I like that they've they've been like friends for so long, and their kids are friends, and you know, I like I like that kind of that story. What celebrity divorce has devastated you the most? Oh, who's been divorced recently? Or I don't know. Do you um, feel like I feel like the last one that really wrecked people were. Brad and Jennifer Aniston. I mean, yeah, that one was not. Not in Brad and Angelina. Mm, I, I don't, don't feel, feel like, like it people. Had the same. No. I mean, like really wrecked people. Mm-hmm. Before that, it was like Britney and Justin. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that was back in the day where it was just like, it just makes too much sense. How could they not date, you know, in They're sync, Britney 17. Spears? <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe it's because I was 17. I at know, the time. but I remember that was, yeah, I was like, um, if they can't make it. Who can? Okay. I, no what one hope, can. What I, hope do I, I have? I honestly remember like thinking about Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake like, when they broke up. It's like I don't understand how can they not make this work? It's just like <laughs> it's we need mm-hmm. this. This is, but I I feel like yeah I don't know if you like you know how they say they don't ha- there's no real, real movie stars anymore. There's no true like you know like it's like a like America's royalty, you know couple. Yeah. Do we have one? I mean, I feel like it was Kim and Kanye for a hot sec. I feel like when I think of um, American royalty, it's okay. a lot of cars. I have an Beyonce answer. And, and it Jay-Z. is Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yep. I they think better. They, they better. If they, if not. they didn't work out, I think people would be devastated. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, she's pregnant. Again. <laughs> she's pregnant. Yeah. Can yes. you imagine anything more devastating than them breaking up while she's pregnant? No. <sighs> no. They're also so funny. It feels like everyone just wants to be them. Yeah. yeah. That would be, yeah. I think they're kind of good call, Amanda. Thank you. Can we? Well, uh, if they haven't been officially named America's like royalty couple, we're doing it. We're now. doing it now. The Vile Files first annual. Any, but I don't <laughs> I want to embossed. Really, I don't know if. Yeah, I feel like people would be truly devastated. Yeah, yeah, I would be. Yeah, I feel like this was. I feel like this was less of like a notable couple, but like when John Mulaney and Anna Marie Tendler broke up. I found that very upsetting, but it was kind of a similar like Ned from Try Guys, like you branded yourself as a uh, wife guy and now yeah. you're breaking mm-hmm. up with your wife. E- <laughs> All oh, we God. ever heard about his wife was in his stand up about like how in love he was with his wife. Yes, and then one day, own. like one day he was in rehab and the next day he like- He's Olivia Munn's pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> Olivia exactly. Munn's pregnant. Ooh. Yeah. And they met at church. 
Oh, who? John, allegedly uh, John. Well, actually, so is that that famous like Celebrity Wednesday church that people pretend <laughs> to celebrity like Wednesday pr- church? There's is it on Wednesday? Church? There's this Hillsong. church. Yeah, it's like Hillside. I thought or Hillsong some shit. went down. The song know. was Does like, that not exist anymore? I just remember moving to LA and like every Wednesday people were like, Where I'm like, what are you doing? Like, we're going to church. I'm like, what? Like, and it just it's it was like a celebrity meetup. Yeah, it was yeah, it was a it was a scene. I can imagine like the assistant like emailing the pastor being like, sorry, we have no avails for Sunday. Could we look to next Wednesday evening? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't and, and if you found <laughs> if people found like a, a religious fulfillment out of it, no no disrespect. I, I feel like the pastor recently like had an affair with someone else. I don't know. Yeah. It well, was it just was, If it was Hillsong, that's why there was like kind of a scandal and then it went down. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't exist anymore. Oh wow. Okay. Well time for some texting office hours. <laughs> How's it going? Good. I'm Jen. I'm 25. How can we help, Jen? Um, I need help telling my best friend that I'm not comfortable with her boyfriend staying at my house. Oh, okay. Why would <laughs> your friend's boyfriend need to stay at your house? So New Year's Eve is coming up, okay. and her birthday is the day before New Year's Eve, and she invited them both to come and stay with me. <laughs> she invited them both to come and stay with you. So yeah. she didn't ask. She. Um, how long have you been friends with this friend? Since college, so like, Five, four years. I'm guessing that she's the type of friend or you're close enough where she just assumes she can stay with you when she visits kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, okay. she asked if she could come. And I was like, of course, you're always welcome. And then like two weeks later, she was like, oh, but I want him to come too. Gotcha. What'd you say? <laughs> so I took the coward way out and ignored it and then sent a TikTok, not relevant, a couple hours later. <laughs> gotcha. Well done. Uh, uh, why don't you want him there? So he stayed here before. Okay. Um, and it was really bad, at least in my perspective. So I can give you the rundown of that. Yeah, great. They came and stayed with me. We went out. I DD'd. Um, he was like passed out in my backseat. Fine. He was drunk. He asked what my address was. I gave it to him. It was two o'clock in the morning. He was just trying to get us home. Woke up the next day to like crumbs all over my couch, my coffee table, my rug. So he had ordered like DoorDash or something at 3 a.m. He didn't ask if it was okay. Didn't ask if we wanted anything. That was the first thing. And then the second thing, when they got up, I was like, oh, I'm going to go change for brunch. I was like a foot off the couch and he ran and cannonballed out of my brand new sofa. I was like, okay. Third thing, they left and I found beer cans all over my best guest bedroom on my brand new wood desk. They left ring marks. So it was just like crazy. And I just don't want him here again. Do you think it was more him than her? Yeah, that was all him. Um, Mm -hmm. But obviously she was around for those things. I think, I mean, it's her boyfriend. So maybe she's just used to that behavior and I'm not. Did Um, you? So she didn't say anything. Last time they left, after they left, did you say anything to your roommate whatsoever? Or your friend rather, I'm sorry. I didn't anticipate a situation where they'd be coming again or he would be coming again so i was just like it's her relationship not mine you know it's over and done why did you anticipate that they would never visit again well i anticipated he would never be here again like she comes she stays but like i never saw a situation where like i would invite him back into my household (laughs) gotcha all right well you definitely have to say something i know (laughs) and are you like asking for help how to bring this up yeah i don't know i like i don't want to hurt her feelings i don't know how to address it because it's been so long but now they want to come and it's also the day after her birthday which is like another issue yeah. to it and why are they coming to your town so apparently all of her local friends like kind of dubbed her and weren't going to be around so she like asked if she could come and of course i said yes um, and then she threw him in the mix later. I mean, I'm assuming she wants to be with her boyfriend on her birthday. Which, of course, I get that she wants to be with him. I'm just in a weird position because I never brought it up before. Yeah. And now we're here again. <laughs> so where are you on, like, is it a non-negotiable? Like, there's no world in which he can come? I don't, I guess I don't know where I'm at. Like, obviously, best case for me, I don't want him here in my space because yeah. it stresses me out, makes me anxious. I don't, I don't know if I have a conversation with her, if that will change things, if I'll probably will still feel that way. Um, and I guess I have to decide if I'm willing to suck that up for her sake. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't do you think know she can afford, like, do you think she's in a position to just uh, afford a hotel room? I don't know. I don't want to, I mean, I, he's not, I think she probably is. 
he's they've come to the area before and he stayed with friends he has here. So like, I don't know if it's fair for me to like throw that out there. Yeah, I don't think it's really up to you to come up with suggestions. It was just, you know, lesson learned here is I think you just need to speak up when it actually happens. Mm -hmm. The the big question is, is this a non-negotiable for you? Or is it like, is there zero scenario where you're like, hey, I'm just sorry, he's just not coming? Probably not because it's her birthday and I don't want to (laughs) be, I don't want to do that to her. If it was a different time, probably. But the fact that it's her birthday, I think adds a different level. So I would probably be willing to suck it up. But I do want to like preface it at least. Gotcha. Uh, Well, I think you just need to accept the fact that there's no way to bring this up without at least annoying your friend or rubbing, you know, like there's no way she's going to receive this like well. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so I think you just got to have to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And that conversation... So just like list everything out that happened and... Yeah, I don't think... I think you just try to Mm -hmm. keep it... I, you know, off the top of my head, you read, you reach out to her. Mm-hmm. I don't think you should text it. Yeah. FaceTime probably. And just say, Hey, can we talk? I didn't bring this up last time because honestly, I just think you think you'd ask again, but I, I just say like, I'm a little uncomfortable with Ryan coming and staying here. And she's going to say, well, why, why do you, why do you feel that way? And you can say, well, last time, like, Without like, you know, it's like he did this and it was, it felt a little inconsiderate. It just, you know, there's beer cans everywhere. I just wasn't uncomfortable. He just, he didn't seem very, he just didn't seem very considerate that he was Mm -hmm. visiting and he really took to heart, like making himself at home. And like, I'm here Mm -hmm. to support you and you're my friend, but like, he just didn't make me feel comfortable while he was here, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just don't want that again. Now, the big question is, I'm curious what you're going to do if she immediately tries to take his side. And how do you think she will, how do you think she's going to handle that, Mm -hmm. you saying that to her, which without sounding accusatory, just making it about how you felt without, you know, what you don't like, don't call him names. Don't like lean into like, oh, he's the worst. And like, how can you date this guy? Just say like, listen, like I just, I hated how he handled himself here last time and like i just don't want to deal with that again and it makes it gave me a lot of anxiety how how do you think she's going to handle that i mean she's probably going to get defensive which is why i didn't bring it up (laughs) i tried to avoid it the first time because that is her boyfriend she's going to defend him well i don't know like she can defend him but also acknowledge that maybe he handled a certain way i mean she's still your friend too like there is a middle ground like she should be able to have afraid I'm afraid that's not going to happen. That's what I would love to happen. We had a falling out a couple of years ago okay. with some things I approached her with and she completely cut me off. So I'm like afraid we go. Yeah. Okay, we're to getting, get into yeah. that again. So that's, I don't think you should worry about that. Okay. Right? What do you have okay. to say? Yeah. yeah, no, I think friendship dynamics can be really hard. I've dealt with <laughs> friends with boyfriends and ones that I didn't particularly get along with or like. And so it is, it is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thin line, but I think just being honest and coming from a place of honesty of, of recognizing that it is her boyfriend, that it is her birthday, that you do really want to spend time with her and see her. So is there a way that maybe she can talk to him and let him know like, Hey, so I, I wasn't aware, but last time when you were there, you kind of, you, you weren't as respectful as a guest that I would have, you know, hoped or she would have hoped. So, I mean, hopefully maybe it wouldn't be awkward that there's a way that she can maybe talk to him so that way he can be on better behavior and come and not have it be awkward and just have it be a better time and turn over a new leaf perhaps if you if you if you present it in that way where you want to get to a better place and have a better relationship with him for the sake of your friendship and keep it like Mm -hmm. a productive kind of conversation in that way yeah i think the the approach with the least amount of conflict is you not even suggesting that he can't stay there. I'm not saying mm-hmm. you should do this. I'm just, you know, it's it's you saying, hey, listen, can I talk to you? Last time he was here, this can ha- this happened and it really made me uncomfortable. Can you I like can you just I don't know, talk to him or you're you're it's it's a you're opening him coming, but you're asking him to behave better. 
type of conversation or behave differently and be Mm -hmm. a little bit more respectful about the fact that he is a guest. Mm -hmm. But you're not you're not even bringing up the fact that you're not wanting him there. So like that's right. That's best case. That's like that's the most that's the least conflict. Mm -hmm. But you have to first decide whether that's even an option for you. I mean, if I feel like I have to let it be just because she's my friend and the situation it is. Um, I, I hate that you're okay friends with, with someone that. that you can't feel comfortable communicate with out of fear that mm-hmm. she's just going to shut you out and and mm-hmm. abandon you as a friend. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm also afraid that it will get 10 times worse if you don't say anything and you think you can push through it because you're going to be in close quarters. Mm-hmm. It's already an, it already annoyed you the first time. So you're already going to be past your threshold if he does anything this next time. Right. And I think it's easier to be to think, oh, I can push through it or I won't say anything. But now the fact that you've noticed all these things, you've been put in that position before, you're just mm-hmm. it's going to be the straw that broke the camel's back at that point. I, I yeah, definitely that's don't why think I wanted to address it because yeah, I'm yeah. afraid if I don't that like I'll just explode <laughs> at the littlest thing yeah. if he's here. Yeah. So, yeah, you you could try to just say, hey, this happened. I would love I don't. Can you ask him to be more considerate while he's a guest here. Mm-hmm. If she pushes back on that, I don't Yeah, then then it is a little then you then you have your answer of like what you know you need to do. Yeah. To so say maybe it's best that you don't stay here then if if you insist on him coming that then I just I I need my space. This is my space. And I need it to be respected. And it's Yeah. And if she can't understand that respect that then yeah, like Ugh. what? What does she bring to the table to this friendship? I don't. know. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, no. I mean, she's my best friend from college, so yeah. we've just been friends for a long time, and I've never like she doesn't know any of my opinions about him or anything. Like I've been nothing but supportive. I'm super friendly with him, so I just I was afraid to bring it up. I don't want her to feel like I'm attacking her relationship or feel blindsided because I've never mentioned anything. This before. is just a him. So just, this, yeah. And yeah. you should have, but like, this is him just being a more consider a, a more considerate guest. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't have to get into what you really th- think about him if you don't want to. And you don't have to. No, I wasn't going to. But, I just don't want her to feel blindsided because she uh, doesn't know I have any like opinions. <laughs> well, if she, if she asks why you didn't bring it up, just say, I didn't want to, you know, make a big deal of it because I just thought maybe it was a one-time thing. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't envision a time where it'd be important to bring this up that he would be coming back or staying here again. But now that he is, I do feel it's important to, to get these things off my chest and let you know, because I want, you know, to be a better experience for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And if she can't respect that, then I would, (laughs) I would reflect on the friendship. Yeah. A little bit. I'm know, hoping she will. I mean, I think she'll be defensive off the bat and then maybe, I mean, it's still a month away. So she has time to cool yeah, off. Yeah, you got time. And like defensive. Katie said, yeah. just say, hey, I'm excited for you to come out. I'm excited for your birthday. I just want to talk about this one thing. Last mm-hmm. time he came out, it just, he was a little inconsiderate and he ruined some things. It just kind of left a mess. And I felt like I was just babysitting him the whole time. <laughs> You know, I maybe don't. Say <laughs> I know that. I don't want to feel that way. Yeah, no. and listen, if 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 you want to enjoy him, but I also I don't want like I want to enjoy you being here, and I just I was not I felt really anxious the whole time while he was around, Ooh. just because it just just because of how he carried himself, and I just I don't want to. Can it not happen again? Can you talk to him? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know, I think yeah, I think you just kind of bring it up. I would be I wouldn't be committed to any thing at the end i would just bring it up mm-hmm. that way open-ended and see where it goes because i I agree with katie i mean depending on how she handles it you might say like listen i can't wait to see you but maybe it is best that you guys don't stay here because i don't want him to feel uncomfortable and i don't want to mm-hmm. be uncomfortable and i don't want this to ruin your birthday mm-hmm. right okay you know? yeah i'll do that i'll leave it kind of and see what happens i guess yeah i feel like that's disarming enough that it's not it's mm-hmm. not an attack you're you know, still supportive. You're still excited, but you know, you just gotta, you gotta be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah maybe right. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Just try not to be mindful of your words and that you're not attacking him mm-hmm. or, you know, making her feel like he sucks or you hate him. 
you know? No, no, I wouldn't. I have yet to do yeah. that. So I've been very good about it. I'll just let her know how it made me feel and um, hope she can take my feelings into consideration. That's really That's it. all you got to do. Yeah. And I yeah. think if you say it like that, then she should at least say, oh, I'm sorry. Like that's like, that would upset, you know, like, you know, I'll definitely, like that was rude. I'll, I'll talk to him, you know, the best case scenario, <laughs> I hope for she, that. <laughs> yeah, the best case, like the best case scenario, she downplays it and says she's sorry and that mm -hmm. she'll talk mm -hmm. to him. And then you just have to trust that it was a one-time thing and she doesn't make a big deal about it. Yeah. Because then if it, if she can come out here and it can be a totally different experience and you can have the best time, like, all this was just, you know, yeah, for not, yeah, all not for stress. nothing, <laughs> but because your feelings are valid. But you know, it's mm -hmm. just, I think, I think giving benefit of the doubt and giving a second chance to this, you know, might be beneficial to everyone. But Who knows? You definitely shouldn't be made to feel uncomfortable having no. people in your house. No, it sounds like we have a plan. <laughs> so keep us posted. I'd love to know I how will. this conversation goes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. I'll but definitely let you know. What in happens. the future, do it. maybe next time, just express all you had to do last time when it actually happened was just say, "Hey, listen, like I was just a little frustrated. Like he did this X, Y, and Z. Like just communicate your frustrations in the moment without like causing it a fight. You know, right. at least that way she knows. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I was a little frustrated that he did this. You know." Mm -hmm. And yeah. all, that's yeah, all you had to say. I shouldn't have avoided it, yeah. <laughs> but I did. Yeah, leave and learn. <laughs> all right, well, keep us posted. I will, thanks. All right, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Katie. Yes. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Any final thoughts, things you want to leave our audience with, things you want to plug? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, Vanderpump Rules will be back soon, beginning of next year sometime. <laughs> so make sure you tune into that. There's no official release date. Um, Sometime in February, I believe. Okay, okay. Um, and then, yeah, um, hopefully we'll, we got our sandwich shop that'll be open sometime, you know, early spring and next year sometime. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I I have podcasts as well. Maybe you should name a sandwich off after Raquel and then like <laughs> so, something really. Like sauerkraut or yeah. something? Yeah. <laughs> no. Is it, why? <laughs> Because we like to encourage other people to be petty, even though Listen, we don't. Listen, I, I, I get down with the petty, but like I also want to, you know, not. Know. I'm kidding. That's, that's kidding. giving way too much attention to it. Uh, you also have a podcast. I do. And I have episodes that come out every Friday. It's called You're Going to Love Me Wonderful. on all the platforms. So, yeah. And what's your podcast about for the people who might not have? Um, it's just kind of about, uh, I talk a lot about, you know, human experience and judging and being judged and the opinions that we have. And Great. yeah. Well, check it out. <laughs> check it out and then uh, you can follow me at music kills kate on instagram that's pretty go. much where i'm at and then, yeah that's it uh well <laughs> check out kate check out her podcast check out her sandwich shop when it's out watch her on vanderpump rules yes. serena kerrigan is joining us next thursday for going deeper don't want to miss that uh that will be a lot of fun thanks for listening guys don't forget to uh send in those questions at asknick at castme.com cast with a k for all things ask nick and we will see you okay. next week Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.